Okay. Um, hi, everyone. Um, I'm Arva, and um, I'm investigating a, a rare form of epilepsy called CDK5 deficiency disorder. And I, in RCSI, I am supervised by David Henshaw and Omar Mamad. And in Epilepsy Ireland, I'm supervised by Peter Murphy. So uh, a bit of background about myself. Um, I did my undergrad in pharmacology at, in pharmacology at UCD, where I was looking at um, retinal and macular de degeneration. And in my third year in 2021, I did an internship at Fujinora looking whether, at whether temperature could be used as a parameter to predict seizures in temporal lobe epilepsy. And from there, I got introduced to epilepsy and we applied for the fund, IRC Enterprise Funding with Epilepsy Ireland. And I started my PhD in RCSI in September of last year. So CDK5 deficiency disorder is called CDD is a uh, is caused by the mutation of a gene called CDK5, which plays important roles in the development of the brain. Um, it is a developmental epileptic encephalopathy with infantile onset epilepsy, which means that seizures occur, occur very early in life. Um, it could be as early as two weeks, but the median age is around six weeks. And the symptoms displayed in the slide are displayed on the slide, and the highlighted ones are the ones that I will mostly be focusing on in my research. So along with seizures, there is a severe neurodevelopmental delay, and children are not able to sit or stand independently. They can't walk, and they have motor and communication skills are also extremely impaired. There is visual impairment and breathing problems, and all of these which are mostly seen in epilepsy as well. So CD is a ultra rare form of epilepsy, but it is the most common form of childhood genetic epilepsy. Um, it is found in one in 40 to 60,000 uh, children. And um, as the CDK5 gene is located on the X chromosome, therefore females have two copies of the X chromosome. And as males have one copy of the X chromosome, the majority of children which are um, diagnosed with CDK5 are females, but it is more severe in, in males because um, CD, uh, females still have one copy of the CDK5 gene, even though it is silenced, they still don't have, they do have the same symptoms, but they are not as severe. And according to the IFCR, there are at least two children diagnosed with CDK5 each week. So the CDK5 protein is a very important protein in the body. It is a um, uh, ex highly expressed in the brain, and it is involved in um, the function and development of the brain, and uh, also in learning and memory. It regulates major pathways in the brain, such as neurogenesis, neuron survival, and differentiation. So neuron neurogenesis means um, the formation of new neurons, and neurons are sort of like information messengers. So they use electrical and chemical signals to send information between different areas of the brain as well as between the brain, the spinal cord, and the entire body. So these are essential for every action that our body and brain carry out. So when, when these neurons are not formed properly due to a deficit in the CDK5 protein, these, these could have devastating symptoms which are seen in CDD. So since uh, CDD was discovered in 2004, the treatments were anti-seizure medications, diet therapy as the ketogenic diet, and surgical treatments such as vagus nerve stimulation. However, these, were, uh, these did not work in every patient, and a lot of the patients were, became resistant to the anti-seizure medications. Then in 2018 and 2020, two groups were looking at the possibility of gene therapy, which was looking at replacing the faulty CDK5 gene, and they were able to improve some signaling deficits and uh, anatomical defects in their preclinical models. However, a gene therapy is, has its hurdles as well because it's it, to deliver the treatment to the central nervous system. And But these experiments provide a promising proof of principle that restoring a normal level of CDK5, CDK5 activity may be a therapeutic strategy that we could look at. Lastly, last year, um, Ganexalone is one of the drugs which was approved for C specifically for CDD seizures and CDD and um, and flunforamine. And um, but the problem with all of these is they mostly target seizures. And as I showed in the slide of the symptoms, that um, there are a lot of other symptoms which are very devastating for the patients. They have motor impairment and sleep problems and intellectual disability. So therefore there is no effective therapeutic available as of now. So um, 
People with CDD suffer not only from development impairments due to their CDK5 deficit during childhood, but also from an ongoing CDK5 deficit in adulthood. So this deficit that might be remedied by a genetic therapeutic approach. So my hypothesis is that the loss of CDK5 results in abnormal biological processes in the brain, which disrupts signaling pathways, and we may be able to find another molecule which would control these underlying abnormal biological pathways. So our approach is to target microRNAs, which are small non-coding RNAs between 18 to 24 nucleotides. They regulate gene expression on a post-transcription level. So the diagram here depicts um, the normal function of microRNAs. So DNA has typical genes which code for, um, such as for messenger RNA, which form proteins. So microRNA is also formed from genes as well. However, microRNAs do not form into, do not convert into a protein. So that, that is why it is, these are called non-coding. But microRNAs bind to the messenger RNA and prevent the formation of proteins. So this is a normal regulating function that occurs in a body to control the kinds and amounts of protein made in the body. And a single microRNA can target several hundred, hundred genes and an individual gene can be targeted by multiple RNAs. So these are very essential and important to our survival. And if these microRNAs are not uh, regulated, all the pathways and systems they control can don't function properly as well. So this is just a video of what works. Leading scientists are calling microRNAs the master maestros of the genome. MicroRNAs are quite abundant in cells and have a major influence in cell biology. A single microRNA has the ability to orchestrate the expression of broad networks of genes instrumental in normal cell function. As a microRNA regulates the function of several messenger RNAs, it finely tunes a biological pathway, which can profoundly affect cellular activities. As we discover how microRNAs are involved in biological pathways, we'll also be discovering how their dysregulation leads to disease. Typically, when a microRNA is dysregulated, the pathways that are the targets of the specific microRNA go awry, which disrupts the delicate balance and harmony of normal cell function. Leading scientists Sorry. are... Okay, so um, basically that just explained that microRNAs, when they're dysregulated, they, the pathways they regulate don't work properly and this leads to disease. So the first experiment we did was a small RNA sequencing, which is a technique to isolate and sequence small RNA species such as microRNAs. So we, starting from the tissue samples we get, we isolate brain cells and extract RNA from these. This is then sequenced and we are able to profile and quantify the expression of these in cells. This is a very powerful technique so we, as we can examine thousands of small RNA and microRNA sequences. And this allows us to also examine gene expression profile between various conditions. So for example, between disease, disease and healthy conditions and we can compare those. So um, this, on this graph, this is a volcano plot, and this basically, all the genes, the dots in red, are the statistically significant genes, which are, uh, sorry, statistically significant microRNAs, which are dysregulated in CDD. So dysregulated means that there are not, a, they are, the levels of those are not what normally should be in a healthy individual. So the ones on the left are, uh, they have, they are downregulated, so that means they have a decreased expression in CDD patients. And the ones on the right are upregulated, which means there is an increased expression of these in CDD patients. So this shows a, some of the dis dysregulated microRNAs in CDD as compared to healthy individuals. And as you can see, we have found changes not in just one microRNA, but several, and that each microRNA allows us to control dozens of other genes. So we may have a chance to correct um, the gene activity back to normal. So at the top, you can see all of these are decreased in CDD and uh, as compared to healthy individuals and the dots are just the number of samples we have. Um, and in the bottom, the middle two, microRNA 134 and 132 are upregulated, so upregulated in CDD patients. So this is, uh, so these are highly expressed in CDD as compared to healthy individuals. So in conclusion, 
CDD is a serious health condition and current treatment and existing therapies target the disease symptoms rather than addressing the underlying abnormal biological processes. And from our data, we know that microRNAs are dysregulating CDD and this provides an excellent opportunity to, for disease intervention. Um, the identification of new microRNAs that modulate aberrant neural activity in CDD will likely have broader implications for other severe neurological disorders. And this is the first time that microRNA story is in, in on the move towards CDT, and this is led by Dr. Omar Mamad. And my next steps in the future would be to select the top two or three significantly dysregulated microRNAs and investigate them at a deeper level to see what pathways they may control and understand their targets in the body. And by understanding these, we can direct the development of therapeutics, specifically targeted towards these targets, and hopefully convert the gene activity in CDT back to normal. And thank you to David, Omar, and Peter, and the future team.